I did. Oh, you did. I can't I did. wait to hear what you have to say about that. Hey, Nick, got I, that I've got something exciting. I, I watched it so in depth and so detailed yeah. that I would like to consider myself. I don't know if you're ready for wait this. Wait for it. No, wait. Everyone at home, wait for it. It's just me here. I got to do all wait. this. Wait for it. I am the armchair expert today. <laughs> that was so well done. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld couldn't have pulled that off. Thank you, Nick. Um, <laughs> gosh, I wish I could see everyone's faces at home because I'm sure they're just loving this right now. You know they are. I know I'm loving it here. So you saw the TaylorMade challenge. You saw the uh, the nonsense. Oh, I want to talk about this one too. Cordell. No, let's There's let's start. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who did you have to win? Did you do you have any money on the line? Who did you have? Oh to win? no, I was just fortunate enough to remember that it was even on, and I tried to watch like four holes. It was really hard, but I tried to do it. But uh, uh, Rory won, right? That is correct. Who is he on a yeah. team with? Uh, someone else. <laughs> did, did I get that right? <laughs> We're doing some really good expert analysis here on the live show. Uh, make oh, sure to tune he? in tomorrow as we're just we're calling it for today. We we got the recap done. Nick, we'll see you tomorrow at two o'clock. Matt Wolf was his partner, right? No, he was DJ. <laughs> Dustin John, that's what I said earlier when you weren't paying attention. You were getting in your oh, chair. I hope that was a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make your highlight reel for sure. Yeah, so uh, I guess I don't know. Any all those guys are so good. That's uh, really the moral of today's story. All of these guys are so good. However, uh, when you watch when you watch him swing, you can say the nonsensical terms that were thrown around all day yesterday. That through the four holes that I watched, I couldn't take it anymore. Of uh, hearing about how everyone should just swing their swing, or uh, all their swings are different. So all of you at home who really are terrible at golf don't change your swing because every swing is different. So you need to be you. Uh, that's, that was the takeaway I pretty much got out of that. Uh, so it's absurd and, and trying to look at swings in a little bit different light would be helpful with maybe a little more detail. So I thought this would be fun for today. So I spent all of eight seconds scouring the internet to find four swings that were somewhat the same uh, with regards to the camera angle. And this is what I found. So far, no one's been hurt, Cordy. You want to look at some of these? I, you know, I'd love to. Well, let, let's talk about like when I think similarities between these players, I would say I think I think if DJ Rory and Matt Wolf is all hitting it super far. Yeah. And Ricky hits it far, but maybe not oh, yeah. as far, right? So I think it was a mall. He's kind probably of, the shortest, but not by much. Not by much. So I would like from if you were to go watch, just if you didn't see their golf swings, you just watch their golf ball. They're probably all kind of like a little bit similar in that way, right? Like I know their golf ball is going to go maybe similar places. Yeah. These guys uh, all it hit there. it high, yep. really, uh, really far. And when they want to hit it the farthest, they all hit a, a little tiny draw, even Matt Wolf, which is amazing to watch that he, he tends to draw balls to begin with, except for Dustin Johnson. He's trying to curve everyone to the right, which is part of the biggest problem he has. He has the swing designed to draw the ball. Um, he has the face most closed on the downswing that we'll take a look at. He's swinging to the right of his stance line, and he hit a bunch of pull draws from what I could tell yesterday, even from the minimal amount of time I was scouring to watch it. So Perfect. you're right. So let's, high, well, high, like, draw. Totally. And good. the difference is the biggest difference pointed out yesterday, which I know you have a slide of, is um the backswings right top of backswing they all yep. look quite a bit different so that was where yep. everyone is saying like swing your own swing right that was our yeah, biggest start with that our biggest difference was this slide right here right all all very different yeah. yeah when you're not a professional golf instructor um it's very easy to look at this picture and say wow all these are different um and they're all radically different in some regards but basically the same in so many others so for example you've got uh, Matt Wolf here, he's always talked about as having a very unique swing. You know, let's just start from like his ankles and we'll go up. So his his right leg, his trail leg is almost straight at the top of his swing. His left knee is flexed a ton. That enables him to max out how far he, how mobile he can be from his pelvis downward. And then ultimately helps him be able to turn more degrees if he wants to. Same thing for Ricky, but Ricky's uh, right leg at this point in time in the swing because of where they paused it, they're getting closer to the top, which is when you want to regain the flex in your trail knee, start bending it forward again, like uh, the riding the bike analogy I think we did a couple shows ago. 
before the top of the swing. So you straighten it in the backswing. And I'd recommend most people uh, take out all but a few degrees of flex in their knee if you wanted a basic model by the time your left arm's parallel to the ground in the backswing. At that point in time, going forward, you're going to start to flex it again. That's what most of these guys do. Dustin Johnson does a similar mo uh, method, and then here's, here's Rory. So straighter right leg than left leg at the top. That makes your pelvis more mobile, allows you to turn more. And then we'll look at the three degrees, or sorry, the six degrees of freedom motions of your, uh, your rib cage and your thoracic spine when we get to some gears pictures here in a second. So from the waist down, you've got different degrees, but the same thing is happening. Left knee flexes, right leg straightens. That allows you to turn your hips. That also tilts your hips towards the ground. There are a lot of theories out there that suggest uh, that you shouldn't be doing that, but uh, that seems to be one of the most critical parts. And then there's something else I wanted to try here with you, Corey. Uh, Corey right. And that was, I wanted to draw on these guys a little bit. So if we just start like sketching out some of the parts that everyone is looking at that are yep. different, such as the angle of Ricky's right forearm and where he plays the shaft. And he yep. did the same thing with Matt Wolf here. When I start taking these parts out, you might start noticing how their shoulders are tilted yep. towards the ground. The pelvis is tilted towards the ground and turned, and that is the worst arrow ever. And then you keep doing the same thing with like Dustin and Rory over here. So if you take off their uh, lead elbow down to their wrist, and you do the same thing with all of these guys and eliminate the right arm altogether. Now I challenge people to look at those swings and not see how similar they were with regard to how there's tilting to the left, how their knees change flex, how their uh, shoulders have turned. The part that's different and the easiest thing to look at when you don't know what to look at is how high their arms are, the angle of the shaft. But if that uh, really truly was uh, not a separator of skill, then we'd have nothing to talk about. Uh, their backswings are all unique, but the, what really makes these guys good is their downswing. So it's so common to watch golf on TV and hear about the top of the swing or even like a still picture of impact, but you're missing all the good stuff in between there that matters the most. Um, moving at the slowest point of the swing, the very last foot or so of your backswing is not the, the uh, predisposition of hitting really good shots. Well, we got a lot, maybe different stuff going on with the wrist. We got DJ with his famous bowed yep. wrist, right? Everyone always talks you, you about that. Do. And then Wolf is going a little bit the other direction. He's got his left hand turned on the club so far uh, towards the target where he takes his, it might think of, let's go this way. So if I'm holding on to a club with my lead hand, turning it away from the target, stronger. It's not really stronger so much as it's just turned more of the right. He has his hand turned so far to the left that it's really challenging for him to have the club face closed to the path ever in the swing, which is why I'm always impressed when he starts to hit these little draws out there, how much he has to flex his wrist like Dustin uh, at impact to help him close the face of the path. But yes, his looks different. Uh, he certainly doesn't have his wrist cocked as much because trying to hold the club with that much of your hand on the side of the shaft really makes that challenging to do. You've got Ricky with a pretty flat wrist, but his left arm is so much lower. Dustin Johnson, like you mentioned, flexed a ton. He has the most closed club face at this point in time uh, relative to the swing direction that he has, which, again, makes it really hard for him to draw. Um, or Sorry, to hit those fades into the fairway because he's really set up to, to swing into out a few too many degrees for that, and his face is pretty closed. But he's good. He can do it, and it's not that you can't do it. I certainly wouldn't necessarily walk up to Dustin Johnson and say, man, you need to draw every ball. Uh, that wouldn't at all be the take. And then the same thing for Rory. His is probably just the most standard or uh, orthodox method of trying to hit those. Look at all those lines, Cordy. Gosh, that is that yeah, is that's, amazing. That is amazing. So, tr so try to look at the big parts. Now let's get to the pictures of the big parts here, if I can figure okay. out how to turn off my drawing tool. Back to the mouse. Okay. That's gone. Ish. Clear. There we go. Perfect. Knocking the dead, Cordy. Here we go. All right. So let's start with uh, maybe let's look at the swings. Okay. So this is my best attempt at trying to scrub all these together in the shortest amount of time. Let's go right. So up let's. To the top. So one, we you just talk about similarities in the lower body, right? So we all should watch yeah. similarities in the lower body. That's the sure. first thing to watch here. Yeah. The tilting of the pelvis to the, towards the ground too, and then the tilting of the shoulders. 
Okay. You might notice that all of them are basically looking straight down at the ground. And if you wanted to, probably if you wanted to look at something that was different, you might have Matt Wolf trying to turn his pelvis more so his left heel's off the ground, but none of the other ones do it. Uh, there's something that's slightly different, but the procedure he's using, flex your left knee, straighten your right leg, it's the same with all these guys. It's just how much they do it. That's really what I think separates it all. The same thing with the tilting. You can see how uh, uh, Matt Wolf has tilted the most, followed closely by Dustin Johnson, uh, and then probably goes Rory and Ricky from there. So top of the swing is different in some regards, but not all of them. So when you hear someone say, well, you know, look at how different these are. And what would you do if uh, I did have a coach who works for golf tech ask me, what do you do when Jim Furyk walks in? I said, I ask him the same thing I'd ask everyone else. Where do you hit the ball? Where don't you want to hit it? And uh, what are you trying to do? And then we would talk about how to help him hit it. So he, he would likely want to hit it a little further. Might start with, uh, how about turning your hips more than 20 degrees in the backswing? Wind that thing up a little more like Matt Wolf. It wouldn't be to change the way he swings. It would be done for a reason. So if a teacher tries to tell you, well, look at all these. All these swings are so different. So you should do whatever it is that you want to. Um, I would call that like a, a, a really tough story to, to buy into. And I'd be very worried about that. So let me line all these up when on the downswing when their lead arm is parallel to the ground. This is where some of the good stuff comes. And this is the skill separators. So you, in a way you have uh, moving across the screen, you have Dustin as the most um, leftward bias uh, uh, swing direction with his grip and his club face. But he's also the one who is likely to hit across the ball the most, which he's trying to do. So let's take yeah, a do you know, that. do you know path numbers? I, I'm guessing he's a little left, Roy's a little right. Do you yeah. know? Rory can be quite a bit to the right. Like in this swing, I wouldn't be surprised. He hit a massive, just straight push on this one. It looked like uh, I've seen swing direction numbers for him where it's as far as eight to 10 degrees into out. Uh, I don't think he probably does that anymore. He's hitting pretty straight into the ball, but a little bit in doubt. Ricky is likely hitting out more than three or four degrees. And then I think on most shots, Matt Wolf is probably hitting pretty straight into it. But then uh, uh, there's another aspect of that, which is the swing direction relative to your stance. That's the part that is maybe the most misunderstood. Okay. So rookie here, for example, is aiming what would look like, even though I can't really do this, somewhere down the middle of the fairway. He's aiming yep. straight. And then his swing direction is in to out relative to his foot line and his target line. Some of these guys like Dustin Johnson will aim his stance line in the left rough or left trees, still swing to the right relative to his stance line and hit a giant push fade relative to his feet into the middle of the fairway. And that's how he's trying to play golf. So all of them relative to their stance line are swinging in doubt. Very interesting. Understand that? Now, the limiting factor is how much you want to do that. So take all these guys and let's use the polarity here. So you've got Dustin, who doesn't want to draw any of them, and Rory, who's basically hitting them all really high, really far, and curving them a lot to the left when he's really mm -hmm. trying to smash one. So when the shaft is uh, bisecting their uh, their trail arm, their right arm here, you notice how like uh, if you could just draw a line on to Dustin Johnson's shoulder, his shaft would be bisecting right about where I'm pointing now, like near the mm -hmm. top of his shoulder. It's basically on that. That's the swing direction and that's the most out to in. As you start lowering that on your arm, like Rory does here, uh, that's the swing direction at that point in time that is aimed tremendously in the out. I would, in a probably in an ideal world, I would actually do the Matt Wolf, put it about in the middle of your bicep at this point in time never Dustin Johnson for an amateur player. And if I was teaching someone to stop slicing, I'd do Rory McIlroy probably the most. So I'd live all in there of where I would tell someone to put the shaft based on where they want to hit the shot, what it is they're trying to do, and then their skill level as a player. So first, all of these are below the shoulder. That's the first point in here that's different. Now you can look at the club faces and we'll look at that here in a second too. But all of them have the shaft at this point below the shoulder. And preferably if you're trying to hit it straight, you keep it towards the top of your bicep all the way down to the lower part of your arm. Meanwhile, at Golf Tech, and I didn't bring enough of these because uh, I have too many of them. At the same point in time, when uh, our students come in and their left arm's parallel to the ground, they have the shaft going through the top of their shoulder. Even Dustin Johnson trying to cut all of the shots, make sure they never go to the left, although they keep going to the left, has the shaft through the top of their shoulder. 
and he's trying to slice, but our students keep having it higher. Some of them will even put it through their right ear or their trail ear like that. And occasionally we'll see one that's getting closer to where your eyes are or almost over your head. All of that's just increasing the amount you can swing out to in. It's a snapshot in time. Doesn't mean that's exactly what's going to happen, um, but it is a good precursor uh, to help you determine where those shots are going to go. Let's take off this annotation tool, maybe, and get back to these models. So is what's similar then that we can look with all these is that um, they, they look differently for one because they are trying to do different things, right? I mean, that's definitely kind of obvious here is DJ is doing something different than Rory. And so they're not going to look the same. Um, yeah, I imagine they, they look should. more similar. If DJ was trying to swing it four to the right. Yeah. He definitely had the shaft lower than that. I know that I'm trying to get these camera angles somewhat reasonable. They're all this view I think is pretty good of the next story. So now you've got uh, when the shafts parallel to the ground on the downswing, Rory McElroy, third one from the left, second from the right, uh, right here. How he has the sweet spot of the this club. View, I think is pretty good. Of... Getting a little better at this every day, Cordy. Do this in a different color. We'll go yellow here. Here he's got the sweet spot of the club relative to the positioning of his hands. He's aiming his swing direction right now in out pretty severely. Yep. And that's a really nice way for people to learn how to play golf because there's such an advantage to keeping the sweet spot behind you of the club before it starts kicking out towards the ball faster. If I wanted to make sure that I cut, I'd get it closer to in line or hit fades to sort of what Dustin's doing here. He still has the face angle too close to the path and the, uh, the swing direction is still slightly in doubt at this time. The worst way to swing would be to have the club head on this side of your hands. That is predisposing you and it's almost impossible to correct that in short, such a short amount of time to swing out to in wipe across this ball with the biggest peeling cuts. That's uh, a majority of the people who come into golf tech and say they, they aren't playing very well, aren't hitting good shots, slicing a lot of balls. That's what they're doing. So similar here, you've got your left arms really straight. You can see if anything, there's a tendency for these players based on their grip to actually have their wrists pretty straight or slightly flexed. I mean, those are the things that people at home should be watching at this point in time. The right forearm, if you were to extend a line past uh, uh, Ricky's arm and it keeps coming out, how it gets pretty close to the ball, or in his case, it's a little bit higher even than that. That's a really nice way to make sure that your swing direction is still staying in and out. And uh, the shoulders are still closed. The hips are mildly open. And when you get into Roar or Dustin here, you can see how much more open his hips are. But again, he's trying to hit across the ball. He needs a swing direction that's not going to the right so that he can hit that preferred shot that he's got right now. So tons of similarities in there. You need to line up the club shaft and the face angle at this point in time to the uh, inside of your hands, closer to you than toward the ball. And there's a similarity that is so overlooked, but uh, unfortunately that's like the most critical part of this whole picture right here. Now let's see what we got next. I think I took this to a couple of frames before impact. And yeah, let's see if I can clear everything. So here's your swing direction, slightly Try to draw slightly to the right of their stance, maybe. Yeah, it's getting tough now, Cordy. I mean, a lot of similarities here. Okay, slightly in out relative to their stance. This one's moving this way to hit the ball. Can't quite see the ball on Ricky. He's swinging pretty straight, but even that would be slightly to the right. And then here's something with Dustin. A little bit of this is your camera angle, mm -hmm. but he's got the swing direction here. Aim more to the right. I keep losing my drawing tool. So it clicked off the screen. It's harder than it looks, Cordy. You're doing a great job, Nick. Now, all of these, again, if you trace the right forearm down, See how DJ's got the shaft a little bit higher than the rest of these guys. Matt Wolf in particular, how his right forearm is maybe even aimed slightly down the shaft or closer to the ball than the shaft is. Might notice some other similarities in here as much as I hear conversations about how open you need to get when you start looking at Matt Wolf and Rory McElroy and Ricky Fowler and even Dustin Johnson. Part of his thorax and his pelvis are really open, but the rest of them really isn't. The shoulders are aimed pretty straight relative to the target for most of these guys. 
and even coming through the ball some more. Maybe. Should probably grab the right one. I chose to stop it a little bit earlier. So we're just about where the club is about to enter their body on this side. Mm -hmm. And you've got uh, we've got a playing video I wasn't expecting. Here you can see how straight let me give that wolf up a little further. You can see how straight both of their arms are in here. And how Matt's Matt's hips, Rory's hips, Ricky's hips are maybe open a few degrees. Matt are probably the most closed. Uh, so trying to get more open is a typical thing to talk about with a, a player on TV or when I see the commentators talk about it. Really straight arms, stretching the shaft out away from you. Dustin definitely has the butt under the club the closest to him at this point in time with Ricky the farthest away. But those similar, they're still not very big similarities, but that would be the difference between uh, Ricky hitting out a few more degrees and Dustin swinging a little straighter into the ball. And the most overlooked part, especially for these really skilled players, is how the club appears coming out. So when their hands appear on this side, you've got uh, Dustin trying to hit the, the shots that cut the most and where the butt end of the club and his hands are exiting his body here. It's really low on him. If he had his left arm sitting straight out, you'd look right through the camera and see that it's coming out like down here towards his elbow, that low. And Rory's almost over the top of his shoulder. When you're doing that, what it's really telling you is just which way did you swing. The impact happened a long time ago, but this is a good way to judge that. The higher it comes out, the more in and out you swing. The lower it comes out, the more you have a tendency to hit across the ball. I would really wish amateur golfers understood how this picture should look for them, and I would try to do it about like a Rory McIlroy for most golfers that walk in here. And then you got Matt Wolf up there again, still coming out even higher than than Rory's. So. But that difference is small, but it's overlooked when you uh, are just watching golf on TV as someone who uh, is an armchair expert like yourself sitting there underneath that, that amazing gold light lamp of yours. We don't know where to look. You don't know what to talk about. So when you see something that's just radically different, it's very easy just to give up on the conversation and say everything works. Everything does work, sort of. Um, think some parts they're not equal though uh, where you put your weight when you swing it's not equal across the board of uh, a third of the people should be right and a third of the people shouldn't sway at all and a third of the people should be on the, their uh, lead foot I, I wish it worked like that but there there are reasons that some of those work better than others one is the ball sits on the ground so you, you need to try to figure out how to hit that hit the golf ball then the turf with an iron or how to manage your angle of attack and the kinematics that go into that of the shoulder tilting and how the shaft needs to rise uh, not everything is make created equal and every time i watch golf on tv all i keep hearing is how uh, the armchair experts look at these and and don't know what to say so they end up saying things like swing your own swing look how different these are so taking that like uh, let's go let's go a little sideways here Here's well, a, hey, you, you said something interesting so i want to go back to everyone's talking about the backswing top backswing looking different right are their top of backswings matched up? So you talked about DJ's top of backswing is more for a drop. He's trying to hit a fade, right? Mm -hmm. um, so he's not matched up necessarily. So why are their backswings different like they are? Um, even though then they have some similarities, a lot of things, you know, sync up on the downswing and get in some yeah. really nice positions. Okay, good question. So you can, uh, first I'd say the term matchup has been, uh, said so many times and i think sometimes that one is uh needs a, a definition okay. so first i would say that i'm looking at all of these pictures like dustin johnson's left wrist at the top and how closed the club face is and at that point in time his swing direction is slightly to the right and his club face is very close to the path so maybe that's a matchup if you wanted to say if you're trying to draw that's a good matchup uh, i'm just looking at like at that point in time he's ready to draw so on the downswing, he needs to start opening the face to the path somewhere. His swing direction needs to get more to the left. And that's how I'm viewing golf. So the way you get to the top, uh, you have so much time on the way down to reorganize all those parts so that Dustin does, he is an awesome driver of the ball. He does fade most of his shots, but his bad ones don't overfade. They pull draw. And those are the ones that irritate him. 
Uh, and you can tell that from watching the commentary. So while he may be at the top with his flex left wrist, as he gets really close to the golf ball, he starts to extend his wrist as fast as anyone through the shot, opening the face of the path like he would through a, a bunker shot, but he's swinging really fast and he's very good at managing his spin loft. He hits the ball great like that. So there's just so much time to overcome those things, but you can tell by the, on the downswing when their left arms parallel the ground, most of those differences basically become similarities. There isn't much different there. Maybe it's a touch of where their arm is. Maybe their wrist is slightly different. Uh, but by then they've organized the swing direction and the club face orientation of the path that they want by that point. And then slowly they just keep doing it more and more organizing the swing direction and the face to path as they lower the shaft from there. So looking so, at the top, there's just too much time that can happen from there. Uh, that uh, the best players have learned how to organize their motor program. Like we learned the other day, your swing is all controlled by your brain. They've learned how to overcome those uh, differences that they have at the top. So would a more appropriate phrase be um, swing your own backswing? <laughs> you, you can. No, there's, a, there's more to that one too. So you watch those four guys and they're all awesome players. They've learned how to organize their downswing so that they hit the shot that they're trying to hit most of the time. They don't do it every time. That's why they still have teachers and still ask for help and still struggle week to week because they don't do it every time. Um, they need some guidance or want some guidance. Uh, now, the amateur players, if they walked in and did your Matt Wolf swing, this is basically what you'd look like. So Matt Wolf at the top with his grip turned to the left as far as he can. It's crazy that he, that's how he's choosing to play golf, but he's so good at it. I wouldn't tell him not to do it uh, necessarily. Unless his ball flight um, wanted, unless he wanted to change how he had a shot, and then maybe he'd talk about how that works. But you notice on the downswing with like this person, this is a slicer. The shaft is going through the top of their shoulder, and the club face angle relative to Dustin Johnson or Matt Wolf is way more open here. So that that's what you're setting yourself up to do when you have your arms over your head at the top of the swing like Matt Wolf. He's very good and disciplined and under, has, has learned somehow through trial and error how to keep his shoulders closed and lower his arm down so that he basically fits in that same spectrum as uh, Rory McIlroy and Ricky Fowler did. They just got there different ways. But most people who come in and raise their arms up too high like that have an entry like you see in this picture where the shaft's going through the top of your shoulder on that leftward picture and just continue to slice across the ball. So that probably isn't a preferred way to do it. You'd be far better off doing your Rory McIlroy, Ricky Fowler, keep your arms down, flex your wrists slightly, and then learn how to keep your left arm closer to you so that your swing direction at this point in time is still in to out. It's just simpler to do some things that way, and anyone can do it. I don't think this has anything to do with physical ability or um, what what someone naturally does or not. Those are, those are just skills that you can learn and you can teach, and golf tech coaches teach people to everyone who walks through the door how to hit little tiny draws if they want, reduce their spin loft. But it's from recognizing pictures like this of don't have the shaft go through your shoulder. That's a problem. And then this is about the point in time where the shaft's parallel to the ground. And the pink arrow represents where the club face angle is pointed. The yellow is really where the path of the club is going. And you notice how the sweet spot of the club in this example is on the wrong side of the hands relative to everyone else. That's what we deal with all the time. So if they watch Matt Wolf swing and hear a TV commentator, like uh, Brandel Chambly talking about how your backswing doesn't matter, they're mainly setting themselves up to look just like this picture on the way down without some really excellent coaching or an understanding of what to do or just dumb luck. So let's go into uh, these gears pictures. So take this. This is um, on the left. I believe that is uh, Ricky Fowler. Middle is Rory McIlroy. And the far right is Dustin Johnson, all on our gear system. I don't have Matt Wolf, and he wouldn't have fit on the screen anyway. So we'll just stick with these three. So here's one for you, Cordy. When you look at these guys, do they look really different, or do they look pretty similar? Um, I mean, definitely notice some differences. Sure. Uh, go ahead and explain to me what those differences are, or that you see anyway. Being the yeah. armchair expert. Oh, I, yeah, being the armchair expert here, let me tell you um, everything I know here quickly. No. Um, no, I think I think it's obvious anytime you have a player that has their swing direction going left, like Dustin Johnson, they stand out, right? I, I think knowing path, I mean, identifies a lot of things, right? Like you can see, or the other way around. If you see this, you kind of know what their path is going to be. So I think it's pretty easy to point out Dustin Johnson. 
Um, and then uh, Rory's kind of easy to pick out just because of his head movement. Yeah, thing that unique that he way that he, he tilts his head to the right, which in a way uh, is encouraging him to swing even more to the right. Yeah. So it's a unique way that he's got that put together. Yep. But how about like when you look at the ankles, the knees, the pelvis, if you stop to like right about here on all yep. three of these, do you see massive differences in there? They're looking really similar besides maybe is, is DJ a little more open than the other a, guys? Uh, yeah, a few more degrees and I didn't put his 3D on here. Sure. But then uh, when you get into the shoulders, you notice how they're still tilted towards the ground. They're their still left tilted. Arm is leaning towards their chest some it's not pushed out like that example of the slicer that we had you're just getting back to those things that are the same but it's yep. so easy for people at this point in time to look at the wrists to look at the club face and because those are different ignore the positions of the swing that are very similar what, what about take home, um what about the we, we always hear about spine like keeping your spine angle through impact right yeah. um don't early extend is you know that that kind of term it look you know dj more than the other guys kind of main, maintains the spine angle do i need to use air quotes sure. when i say that is that no no you're you're doing great <laughs> you know he does that he does that better than the other guys what, yeah. what's kind of why does he do that um more so than than them or am i seeing something wrong no the other option there's no there's nothing wrong with that what you're really defining here is like the uh so i would say instead of a spine angle um, your inclination to the ground or all of them are angled about like that yellow line. And you can yep. see how Dustin is more angled. Well, to, to give the touch more interactive on this anyway, if I wanted to hit the lowest pull fade that I could on the way down, I would actually lower myself to the ground, hmm. stay as low as I could and allow myself to keep the butt under the club like, dragging along the ground, because that would be the way to keep my swing direction as far to the left as I wanted to. If you wanted to swing as far to the right as you possibly can, a great way to do that is instead of bending forward until your left arm is parallel to the ground, which is what these guys are very good at relative to where you, you were at the top of the swing. We're going to talk about how you move yourself around a little bit at the top uh, in a comparison with Brandel here in a second, but then you bend forward. The people who early extend as you're describing it really bend forward, but not long enough before they start to bend themselves backward and ultimately lose their inclination to the ground like I'm standing straight up as opposed to bent forward like you see in these pictures. So the more you stay bent forward through the shot, the more leftward your swing direction can be. So out of these three players, that benefits Dustin Johnson the most and Rory McIlroy the least. Rory okay. wants to hit these high push draws or just high massive pushes. So uh, Dustin doesn't, and that's why that shaft needs to come out lower. Now, you, you actually hit on a pretty good point in there. That amount of extension is really going to show up in a different picture. Interesting. Okay. Let's see how close those lines stay. I love my Mac, by the way. The worst, worst oh. computer ever made. That's, that's right. not the official opinion of the show, <laughs> but that, that's your opinion. <laughs> Oh, no, they're terrible, I promise. Okay, so here we are when the shaft is parallel to the ground. Now, I've, uh, you can see, again, you've got Dustin Johnson on the right. You notice he's bent forward the most here. And Ricky and Rory have the most upright inclination to the ground. Same story, Dustin Johnson, that picture right there just screams draw. Uh, the difference between the pink arrow and the yellow arrow really has a lot to do with how far the golf ball is going to go. And when that starts to get tighter as well that's also more of a draw bias piece in there so when you see dustin's left wrist flexed a lot like that in this at this point in time and he has the most loft on his club relative to gears now it's being measured right now he has the club face angle 10 degrees more closed than these other guys who want to draw uh, that is helping him hit the ball to the left and start it there but it's not helping him uh, take the curve and make a make the ball bend back to the right. But you see how the sweet spot on all of these is basically in line with their hands or ever so slightly further behind them. Uh, those are the parts that are that matter. Same thing with the right forearm aimed down towards the golf ball. And at no point in time right now are these guys ready to wipe across the ball like the average golfer does. Uh, the picture I really like in this one is Dustin. How he has uh, uh, some space between his right forearm and his left. For him, or for most people, the longer you keep that in there, the more in the out you can swing. 
that would be a great way for people at home to just learn how to even like chip a ball that would impart the leftward spin that is the beginning of learning how to draw everything poor dustin though has this uh has all of these pieces drawn in of how to hit this massively high bar push draw built into it with the error being too much curved to the left so i think he got tired of doing that and just decided i'm just going to cut everything uh, which he's gotten really good at but it's it's just hard i can see too many draws right here in this point in time so back to your similarities There's some differences in here There's some hip turn that's different if you were to start looking at the rib cage and the right arm in both of these you can see the shoulders are more closed as you progress to the guys who draw the most than the ones who are trying to hit those little fades but still too many similarities in there than differences now when the club comes out this was your question about the uh, uh the extension and the bending backward so you've got dustin here on the right he's the most forward at this point and you notice how his hands are coming out the lowest relative to his body and you've got Rory here, bent backwards the most, tilted to the right with the most extension. He started to bend himself backward. I think that's the uh, the piece when people say extension. There's a lot of things flexing and extending in a swing, but the amount you stretch yourself out backwards is a pretty critical part. That's why you see all the PGA Tour players finish like this through the ball. There's a big element of swinging fast that way. So uh, if I want to cut all the shots, this would be a great way for the shaft to come out. He does such an awesome job of keeping the, the swing direction from getting too far to the right. When it was too far to the right on the downswing, he just lowers the handle, keeps the swing direction straighter. He does a great job, but Rory's just out there keeping the shaft behind him as long as he can, bending backward and smashing that thing out there. Same thing for Matt Wolf with his exit coming out way above his left shoulder. Club face angles, the angles of the shaft. You could maybe pick out some differences in here too, but there are too many similarities for my taste in this. The amount you tilt your shoulders to the right is almost synonymous across the board. All of their pelvises are tilted to the right. Rory does the best job of straightening his legs, but you can see how his right heel with all of these guys, the angle of their foot is about the same relative to the ground. Those are the parts of golf swings that are overlooked. And unfortunately, those are, that's what matters far more than just looking at the top of the swing and then giving up. Then you got a front view. I took this one uh, from Gears. I grabbed this as fast as I could, so I'm not even super familiar with this, uh, what I've got on the screen here. So this is Ricky Fowler on the left, Rory McIlroy in the middle, and Dustin Johnson. I want to make Rory bigger because I think the data that's on there is important to understand. This number is the amount your shoulders are turned, 112 degrees. Dustin's in the 120 range, and Ricky's at 106. This 19 degree number is the rib cage, how much that's actually stretched backwards a few degrees. And in Rory's case, about 20, it's really extending his thoracic spine all the way from the sternum up. Those are things that help you make a longer swing. That's the benefit of doing that. And then Dustin has probably the most extension back of 22 degrees with his thoracic. Interesting enough, um, Ricky Fowler at five degrees back. Uh, I think I'm at the top of his swing here. It looks really close to that. He has the least amount of uh, thoracic extension, which is really interesting because at the top of the swing, he has his pelvis angled down to the ground the most. So it's harder for him to stretch his back out as much as you're seeing those other guys. If he'd straighten his right leg a touch more, bend his pelvis back a little more, he could uh, extend his thoracic spine backward as much. You think there's a question in there? I'm trying to go fast over this point, and it's a little more detailed than I think most uh, golfers are, are ready for, but they actually do need to hear that. He's going to take the card away because he's a Little keep, keep it rolling. Well. Keep going. All right. Yeah, keep, last, keep it the rolling. Last, last number here is the uh, this one. 36, 31, 40. That's Dustin Johnson. That's the amount that their shoulder or their thoracic spine, right where the rib cage would be, how that's tilted towards the ground. All of them are tilted to the left, and you can see that uh, the guys who are just ripping it out there are somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees of that, that tilting to the left. So you've got those three different parts of the swing. They're all demonstrating them exactly the same. But when you watch this forward view of people's golf swing, you see all these radically different things when you're not looking at, at what an experienced golf teacher should be identifying, which is how do they move the rib cage around? How's the pelvis moving? The line that's drawn on the ground here is the amount of pelvic sway that they're using. And you can see how when this line of the center of their pelvis is drawn on the ground, how it basically sits in the middle of their feet. 
for these players. Mm -hmm. They aren't doing. Oh, my favorite picture ever, Cordy. They aren't doing this wonderful abomination of a swing, which is often described on on uh, the Golf Channel. And I love all those guys there, including this guy. He's a super dude, but he is a lost soul when it comes to how to uh, explain the swing. But these these pictures do not look like Dustin Johnson or Rory McIlroy, all the way down to you notice how everyone's feet are on the ground. Um, and that being a critical part of playing golf is just a, a total farce. This, this picture of, of Brandel out in New York City in the streets is unreal that you would post that online. I mean, unless you're looking for just people to explain that you don't know much about golf. The limiting factor when you play golf like this, you can see that the left knee would move away from the target. All of his weights on his right foot, shoulders are barely tilted. If there's a ball on the ground, wouldn't even be able to see that. None of that represents the way Dustin Johnson is out there smashing the golf ball every day. It's just a picture. Um, it, I mean nothing but uh, no ill will towards Brandel for trying to put a, a very cool image online. But if that's really how you are trying to swing a golf club, you're misguided at best and totally lost at worst. And uh, I think we're probably somewhere in the middle based on, on that image and just the the rebuttal that would be a fun show someday to talk all things brandel chambly i bet uh i bet a few people might watch that and we could do that for a couple hours too but that's uh, my point on all of this about the show today is really you can watch people play golf and you can see the top of their swings are radically different that's all well and good but that is not uh, what you should be paying attention to you're looking at the wrong point then so last image for you cordy Gears can do some really awesome things. They uh, have 50 to 75 players in their library database of a tour average swing. So imagine you took your best 50 uh, students ever and you made them into one person. You averaged out all of their movements. This would be the same positions that we've been talking about. On the downswing, shaft goes through the middle or lower part of your bicep when your left arm is parallel to the ground. Your knees aren't really turned, your pelvis isn't turned, your shoulders are still close to the target. Both of your feet are on the ground. Shaft parallel to the ground. The sweet spot of the club slightly inside relative to the hands. The face angle with the loft of 4.1 degrees means the face is turned down relative to just horizontal four degrees. And that's on the left-hand side. This player is ready to draw. And the PGA Tour average on these is to swing in out a couple degrees. Then in the follow through, the hand path comes out just below the shoulder, close to the middle of your, your bicep. So it came in on the way down, about through the bottom in this picture, and then it exits on this side, about through the middle. If your hand path does that, it's hard for you to swing into out or out to in too many degrees. It's really challenging because you would have had your hands in a different spot at those two point times. So if you want to watch golf on TV, try to find a decent camera angle like this when you do see a, a, a good swing and just watch the shaft on the way down when their arms parallel to the ground, where is it? When it comes out, watch how much the club face twists through the ball, where the shaft is on the way down. Those are the things that matter. And they're not even talked about when you watch golf on TV. So hopefully that's why people are watching shows like what we're doing here. Beautiful. I like that. We might have to share that image. I think that's very... Uh has some good insight there um, that we all can take away from that. But no, Nick, I learned a lot. Thanks for sharing. No problem. Hey, tell me what, what's like the, uh, you listen, you do tons of these golf podcasts and uh, you hear a bunch of people talk about golf. You've built like an awesome brand that way. What out of what we just talked about, like resonates most with you? Um, well, I, I think this idea that you always got to know what someone's doing, what ball flight are they hitting? Like, what are, what are they trying to do? Like, you can't comment on DJ's golf swing if you don't know what he's doing. You can't comment on Rory's golf swing if you don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and you kind of like everyone has similarities, but you got to understand all these pieces to put it together. It's almost like a, I've heard someone say a, a case study of one a lot of times. And I don't know if you like oh, that or not. It's um, kind of like a, I probably refer to it more as it's a big puzzle piece. Yeah, and you can't. Uh, or it's a big puzzle. So we just talked about all those little tiny pieces that go together to make it an actual puzzle. Mm -hmm. And if you don't first identify the pieces, like when your left arm's parallel to the ground, what should I be looking for? When the shaft's parallel to the ground, what should I be looking for? 
when my hand is turned this far, what's likely to happen? You have to identify all those pieces so that you can make a giant puzzle. If right. you start with, uh, I have two puzzle pieces. I have how I address the ball and how the top of the swing looks. You can't make much of a puzzle out of that. Yep. Yep. No, for sure. I think it's super interesting. I like the similarities. I like, um, you know, if you just look at the the lower body, like the, the, the pelvic tilt and all that kind of stuff, and you watch that. I mean, you know, even wolf swing, they look pretty similar if you just ignore, um, yep. you know, the arms so you can see there. And I think that's a good check for golfers is how do you look you know, compared to right, that? Right. right? And like, Matt Wolf, you... it's strange. Like Matt Wolf has one of my favorite swings. I'm really in awe of how he's able to hit shots so straight with his attachment to his left hand grip on the way that he does. Uh, I didn't really show the front view at impact, but he has the most flexed wrist as a result. Those aren't easy things for people to copy, and it's not the yep. way I would choose most amateurs to play, but his swing is awesome. I think it's great. Uh, Dustin Johnson, quite honestly, might be one of my favorite swings. I put him in my top three right now, too. Oh, yeah. I'd just teach him. I'd probably say, oh, well, but we hit these things a little straighter, and I'll help you just stop hooking. Um, yeah. Instead of, well, I mean, I, I, my only pushback to you on that is a lot of, yeah, I, he's playing a lot of golf and he's probably tested a lot of different things. And, mm -hmm. you know, if someone feels like that's how they play their best golf and that's what they believe, which he obviously is, yeah. you know, that cut, then I don't know. I would be hard pressed to, it's hard to say to change that. I, I think yeah. you know, if, if he's and, out there testing and say, all right, let's play today only hitting draws, let's go only hitting fades or when you're under the gun, um, unless you're really training hard, I, it's hard. You can't train to, you know, it's really difficult to train to live up to that major last round yeah. kind of thing. And I don't even mean to say it that harshly. I yeah. think uh, that we saw all those puzzle pieces line up to the ball drawing. And that's why I think that would be easy for him to do. Well, He's sure. defaulted to these cuts to add some more backspin to the ball. Uh, and he feels more predictable there. That's still awesome. But I know guys like Dustin Johnson who are stud players, but started to hook too much, didn't know how to stop hooking, and then said, I'm just going to cut them all. And then those are ultimately the guys who start, uh, who still have the, the swing parameters and those puzzle pieces together to draw. So it doesn't always work for too long. I'm still in awe of the dude. He's, like I said, he's my top three favorite swingers, even though it doesn't look like how I would probably piece it together as a model swing, because there's so many parts of it that are so good. Maybe we should save an episode for um, performing under pressure kind of yeah. conversation around what comes out, you know, with your golf swing when, when you're under the gun. Um, but the armchair expert bumped his computer <laughs> cord. And so his computer's dying over here um, because during our really smooth yeah. transition, uh, I knocked out my, it just happened. Cord. Well, yeah. that's all right, Cordy. What are we going to do tomorrow? We are going to look at my golf bag or maybe bags. Um, yeah. We're not, we're not quite sure. Uh, yeah. and you're going you're to help me figure out uh, what to be playing. Cause you guys are, are doing free kind of club evaluations, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to download the golf tech clubhouse app, you've made it 48 minutes into the stock. Uh, we're giving away a time for anyone in North America to talk to a professional coach who also fits golf clubs. That's all they do is teach and fit uh, about your stuff. So you take a picture of your golf bag, send that up uh, to our cloud services, download our app, and then poof, you can set up an appointment to have a Zoom call with a coach. Uh, we haven't had very many people take us up on that, surprisingly. So I thought it'd be fun to show like what sort of experience you might get from that. And the idea isn't for you to buy clubs. I'm, I'm certainly not going to sell you anything, but I might be able to help you make a good buying decision so that when you're ready to get something new, you'll know where to start and you save a bunch of money that way. Love it. Well, we'll see you back here. Two o'clock, Nick. <laughs>